Hello people, this is Zebra. Welcome to my channel where I talk about my suffering. This is a ranting video, so I'm going to be talking in English. And for those who are Cantonese speakers and want to, you know, watch my videos and actually understand what I say more in a more Cantonese way, I guess, then you can click CC down below. I will be putting in the subtitles just for you. And my parrot is singing. I'm guessing my mom opened the door, that's why. As I've said previously, this is a ranting video, so grab your snacks and grab your drinks. And we are going to talk about my inner turmoils, episode one. <laughs> so today I'm going to talk about my year seven experience in the UK. Some of you probably would have known or I, that I've talked about it before, probably. I've stayed in the UK for 10 years and then I came back to Hong Kong just around three months ago. So as many of you would have known that I've stayed in the UK for 10 years in there since sec secondary school all the way through to university. Then then I came back to Hong Kong and to find a job. And throughout the 10 years, lots and lots and lots of things has happened. Um, good and bad, but mostly bad. So except for the people who are close to me, like my parents or my friends that I, I'm really close with, that I'm intimate with, knows that I actually changed school. I transferred school in the middle. So the first school, I'm not going to say its name because otherwise it would just be awkward. <laughs> the first school I went to was... It's alright, it's not bad. It, to be honest, it's a very good school. It has everything that I want, it looks pretty. And the teacher were generally nice, I guess. <laughs> I guess, I don't know. <laughs> But it's just the people. There are times where I got really down because of the people. So what happened? Well, basically... But to be, to be honest though, let's rewind everything back to, you know, primary five. And at that time, I have to say my academics wasn't great. And it was constantly dropping. And by the time I got to primary six, Things aren't just that good. I'm completely failing in every subject. All the teachers say that if I don't work out, I'm going to go into a band three school. And in Hong Kong, right, there's a rating for schools. Band one is the best. Band two is like middle. Band three is the worst. And the secondary school that I got into is in band three, and it was the worst in band three. So. That's not good, isn't it? <laughs> That's why my parents planned for me to go to the UK. I completely forgot that I had a teeth extraction. That means I can't eat hard things. And this is really hard. Nothing seems real at that time, you know, when it's in summer. Because I, 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 the summer holiday my, in my primary six, for my primary six year was actually, you know, quite fun. Like, it's summer! We're going to go to Ocean Park, we're going to go everywhere, just have fun, you know. But then the moment arrives, August arrives, and I start to panic because that's when I realise, oh no, it's real. I am going to the UK. Yeah, it wasn't until then I start feeling the Oh no, I am going. I am going to leave my home. I am going to, you know, not going to be able to see my friends as often as I want to. At the, I don't know, 30th August? End of August. It must be 30th or 31st, I don't remember. And then I went through the departure gates. The moment I saw my parents wave my hand, Tears start whirling in my eyes. I was really, 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 really damn scared. Imagine, imagine an 11 year old child knowing full well that she's going to go now. The reality kicked in. And then her mother and father just at the gates waving, bye, 
I see you. It's not exactly the best experience because I was underage. I need to be with a group of children that's also under flying underage. That means I'm under someone's, you know, supervision so I don't get lost. Yeah, the 12 hours flight was hard. I can't sleep. I just couldn't sleep. Right, I forgot. There's a there's a thing going on, I think it's like some kind of construction work. You guys are gonna have to bear with it, I'm sorry. I wait for it to die down for a bit. Okay, it died down. Cool. Cool. The 12 hours flight was really hard. It's I, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep at all. I've watched movies, but there isn't that much movie I'm actually interested in. I watched my FIFA throughout the whole 12 hours flight and I just couldn't sleep because I miss Hong Kong already. I was in the midair and I'm missing Hong Kong already. It is that bad. Eventually we arrived in UK. It was 6, 5? Probably 6 o'clock in the morning. No one's awake except for the people in the airport. And my guardian was waiting there. And it's the first time I met them and oh, they are angels. I I thank them so much because they helped me so much throughout the years and I remember when I arrived in the airport he very kindly introduced himself and he knew full well that I probably didn't understand a single word that he's saying. I probably say something that he wouldn't understand because my accent is so thick but he still treated me very warmly and he took care of me. But the thing is though, um, at that time, I'm not, I don't exactly have long hair because you see my hair was like here now but when I first arrived in UK I had very 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 short hair like boyish hair after a few years when we talk about this thing you know me coming to UK for the first time and he meeting me for the first time he told me that he actually got a bit you know shocked when he see me because it was very clear that on my, on my information that the information that they received that I I am a girl I am I'm still am thank you very much I like being a girl but because of the short hair he actually looked twice again because you know I at that age at 11 my body hasn't exactly developed yet you know basically my boobs haven't been grown yet right <laughs> and yeah i was i was wearing very boyish clothes you know black or white t-shirt probably without any like slimming things or whatever on there i don't know what you call them and then a jeans that ha is literally plain color and then a pair of trainers i remember that is black or with a little tiny purple on there I have two suitcases. One of them is black and one of them is purple or pink. And you might ask, well if you have a suitcase that, that is purple and pink, then why did, why do the others still think that you're a boy? The thing is, what they what they have in their mind is oh maybe that child borrowed, you know, their sister's or their mother's suitcase. That's why the suitcase is pink and purple. They have no idea that I am a girl and one of the seniors who I met at that time he actually thought I was a boy like for real like literally so anyway school started and I don't understand anyone it was okay year seven it was all right of course I know ABC and I know how to introduce myself right but the thing is speaking it and listening to it from a foreigner who speaks English fluently and very quickly right it's not the same as listen to listening to a recording on a listening exam it's very 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 different it was very hard for me especially in lessons there is a class of what 10 11 12 the teachers can't exactly repeat everything otherwise the whole class would just stay on chapter one for the whole year right nothing would have been done in class which i understand and i was trying to catch up because you know everyone's so there's no foreigner in there and when i say there is no foreigner in that year 
I mean, like not only Asians. That there, there's n even from Europe or America. None, no, none. There's no Asian, right? There's no European, even Americans. No, there's only me, a tiny little girl, eleven years old, who doesn't speak English. Probably no one understands what she is saying anyway. Was pretty much alone in that school. I do have friends, okay? I had two friends, three, three. At the start of the year, I made three friends. I'm going to call them A, B, C. <laughs> person A, she is a very sweet and very nice person. You know, she invited me to her house and introduced me to her brother, her younger brother. And the house was massive, <laughs> I remember. But unfortunately, she left uh, after year seven. So in year eight, I didn't stay in contact with her because she doesn't have a Facebook. So we lost contact. So, but if you're watching this and you realize I was talking about you, then I didn't. I don't mind you come back into contact with me I could, because I have no way in contact with you, mate. Where are you? And person B is, she stayed in that school throughout, well, at least from what I know, from year seven to sixth form. Again, I didn't stay in contact with her because in year eight, she started playing with the other group, you know, the popular group. And I felt like she just changed really. Her whole atmosphere around her just change and I'm I just don't feel comfortable around her anymore so I didn't I stopped playing with her and she doesn't seem to mind so yeah that's that and then there's the third person the person C and she is the only person that I still keep in contact from that school okay we had a momentary stop there was a while where I feel like Yeah, you don't want to be friends with me My insecurities got the better of me And everything fell <laughs> Then you know like the roof, right? It just went And then all the insecurities just come pouring in Yeah, the, yeah, basically that, right? So yeah, I will have to say in that school It was hard It was very, very hard And Year 7 was alright, but it's not the best. Yeah, so this is my first ranting video. Hope you like it. There's a reason why I wanted to do these kind of ranting videos because I'm looking into the camera and I'm talking to you guys like a friend. And because I feel like if I talk about the bad things that I went through, you guys, I don't expect you to understand it because how can a person understand the other what the other person's going through because everyone's different but if i told my story as flaw as it is then you know maybe you'll get some healing for those of you who are struggling just to know that you are not struggling alone and a lot of others have been struggling too it's just that some of us came through it and won yeah so i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope my story with flaws can you know help you to ease a bit of uneasiness in your heart and i'm sorry for my talking today because i had a teeth extraction i just it's just my words pronunciation are a mess at the moment Hope you guys can understand that. I'm sorry for the inconvenience. You make sure you follow, right? Otherwise, you won't be able to see your girl talking like this again. You know? <laughs> Thank you. Bye.